I'm so glad that we got to read one of my favorite Gospels. You like that one? Yeah, that's John chapter 6, verse 1 to 10. The beginning of the Gospel of John chapter 6 about the... It's about the multiplication of the loaves and fish. It's one of my favorites too. Yeah, everybody loves that story. But, um, you know, I was wondering if you could give everybody some more insight by kind of repeating it a little bit. You know, every time you read the Gospels, you get another feel for what's going on. Okay. I even brought a prop. You did? Get it! All right. What's this, Eugene? That's my lunch pad. Once upon a time, there was a little boy, and he lived in Galilee, but he didn't live right by the lake. He had to walk pretty far to go to see Jesus preaching on the, like, like somewhere near the lake. So his mother packed him a lunch. Makes sense. I can kind of see that happening. Then what happened? Well, it says it in the gospel, if you read carefully, that the little boy took his lunch and weaseled his way up front near the apostles. Yeah, it kind of does imply that. Then what happened? Then Jesus, after preaching for about three, four hours, said, let the people have a lunch break. Yeah, it, it kind of it kind of did say that, you know. He says, let the people get something to eat. Then what happened? And then Philip said, you're crazy. We don't have enough food to feed all these people. Even if we could go to the store, we wouldn't have enough money. So forget it. Dismiss the crowds. Ah, yes. Philip, and I'm sure that Andrew and Peter certainly joined in and said, come on, enough is enough for today. Let the people go home. But Jesus wanted them to have what they needed. Not only spiritual food, but food for nourishment for their life. Yes, Jesus takes care of our physical, and mental, and emotional, and our spiritual needs. It's not just uh, pie in the sky spirituality, but he takes care of us in regular things like food. So then what happened, Eugene? Now here's where it gets interesting. The little boy, hearing what was going on, goes up to one of the apostles, I think it was Andrew, and says, tell Jesus he can have my lunch. That's exactly what happened when the little boy heard what was going on. What did Jesus do? He accepted it. He said to the boy, thanks. Hey kid, what do you got in that bag? And what was in it? Let me see. One loaf? Two? Hurry up. Relax. Three? Four? And five? Five loaves of bread. That kid's mother must have thought that he was going to be hungry. Well, it was a long walk. And the kid not only had the five loaves, but he also had... Come on. All right, let's see what's in here. One fish. Jesus. And then what happens? And then it's amazing because that lunch, which seemed so small, fed so many. I'm talking thousands. Yeah, it is amazing, Eugene, that Jesus can take our little gift, whatever it might be, it seems simple and not enough, and multiply it to do a lot of good for so many people. And that's the moral of the story. But how does it apply to you and me and to everybody who's viewing, to all of us? Well, come on. 
catch it. You don't have to have a lot. You could feel like you have, um, you're inadequate, that you don't have enough to give. But if you give the gift to Jesus, wow, many people will be fed. I think that's a perfect analogy for our lives, Eugene. Like, uh, we feel inadequate. Like, what am I going to do in this world? But when we give our gift to Jesus, he multiplies it. Like, take you, for instance. You're, you're just an ordinary slob. <laughs> but somehow, and I don't know how, it's a miracle, God uses you to do some good. And the same thing with Bill and Fran and everybody. Yep, that's the way it works. And don't be afraid to give your gift to Jesus. But, Eugene, there's something you didn't mention. What? You have to give it up. You can't hold on to it. If you share it with Jesus and it goes for others, you have to give it away. Oh, yeah. So, you have to give your life away to Jesus in order for it to become bigger and better and do more. And a lot of people claim it. They cling to their stuff and say, no, it's mine. And I don't want to share it. And that's unfortunate. All right. Now, time for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> nope. You wait until after Holy Communion. 